Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So if you've been watching my channel, you know that this project is my favorite of the year. I am very excited to get some beautiful dahlia blooms that I can add into bouquets and just make arrangements around the house. Uh, and I am packing 30 dahlias, at least 30, into this nine and a half by two and a half bed from Vigo Gardens. I un unboxed this bed in a previous video. If you're interested in the bed, I absolutely love it. There's a link below. Uh, you'll get 5% off in free shipping, and there's actually a pre-order discount going on now, so you can stack that 5% on top of that pre-order discount. So last year I tried to go do grow dahlias, and I didn't have the best experience. Uh, here at my house, we have very heavy clay soil, and I planted a bunch of dahlias around our new paper patio, and they actually rotted from too much water and insufficient drainage. So this year I decided I still wanted to give dahlias a try, so I had no option but I'm to try them in a raised bed. I have a few left over last year that I saved and stored. Some of them are looking okay, some of them not so much. I'm gonna plant those elsewhere in the garden. These dahlias are all fresh and ordered this year. I got them from um, Eden Brothers, which I ordered from last year, and the ones that did produce last year did great from Eden Brothers, and the rest of mine came from theflowerhat.com. So a couple things to know when you're ordering dahlias, there are several different variety types. So there's the big dinner plate size, which I have a lot of those here, and then there's what they're called pom-poms, which are like a small ball that looks very uh, symmetrical and it's quite beautiful. Uh, the colors that I like are typically apricots, pinks, and whites. So this whole bed is mostly apricots, pinks, and whites. I do have a beautiful variety. Uh, I will show you earlier that, or show you later, that's yellow. It's called Hercules. So a couple things to know about dahlias if you're ordering them offline. So dahlia growers either provide clumps, which is like this. It has multiple tubers, multiple eyes. You can see it's already got some growth coming along here. Or um, these came from Eden Brothers. Eden Brothers sells pretty much all clumps or individual tubers. So this is one tuber um, and typically single tubers come from smaller dahlia growers or their rare varieties. So this one's called Senior's Hope. It's really beautiful. Um, I'll give you some details about them here in a minute when I go over the list I have. So here's a little closer up look if you want. So last year my labeling method for dahlias I didn't love so much um, as far as storage. This year, since I have so many in this bed, I've got these little um, labels here that have the variety name on them. I picked up these from Target, just if you're interested, and I used a Dymo label maker to print labels. I do this all around my garden and I find that the Dymo label maker lasts quite a long time. So I've got clear in here and I run out of clear tape and so some of them have just the, the white tape on them, but that'll be fine. Uh, these are typically in the like dollar aisle at Target right when you come in the store. I don't know if they had them last year. I purchased these last year and I bought all of them that they have. So if you were in the Dayton area of Ohio last year looking, at, um, looking for these at Target, I probably bought all of them before you got there, so sorry. Um, so I'm gonna go over the list of dahlias I have first. Let me break my phone out. Uh, because, and I'll show pictures on the screen what they look like. So I'll go through these rather quickly and just flash them up on the screen to give you some details um, about the colors. So the first one is Kona. It come from Eden Brothers and it is a white color. It isn't a mix, a uh, cafe con leche mix. Uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier is I did have buy several mixes of dahlias and so the tubers I don't know what variety because the tubers come in one packet unnamed uh, but I know the varieties that are in there there's one of each so what I've done is I've created labels with all the varieties that are supposed to be in that mix uh, and then also labeled that label cafe con leche mix so I know that when it finally blooms and I get a bloom out of the dahlia I can rearrange the labels and then going into storage next year I'll be able to tell what those are so I went over Kona breakout is a beautiful dahlia with white uh, pink and blush and a yellow throat. And then we have Takeoff, which is kind of more, one of the more interesting colorations that I got this year. It is purple, white, yellow, and pink. Uh, Jowie Winnie, which is pink and yellow. 
Rock Run Ashley, which will probably be one of my favorites this year. It is a light pink and apricot. And then we have Crichton Honey, which is very similar. It's a peachy orange color. Uh, Sweet Natalie, which is a white, very kind of large dahlia with a pink blush. Hercules, which I mentioned earlier, which is a yellow. Cornell Bronze, which is a deep orange pink. Senior's Hope, which is a dark pink purple. Coralie, which is also known as Castle Drive by some growers. Uh, it's a pink dahlia. Cafe Ole, which is a very popular variety that's grown quite a lot. Uh, it's a dinner plate dahlia and it's white with a pink blush. It gets very large. Shiloh Noel, which is a white with lavender. Florel, which is white with yellow blush. Rycroft Brenda, which is white with pale pink and lavender. Peace Pact, which come in the Cafe Con Leche mix, which is white with a yellow throat. Small World, which I'm really excited about adding to arrangements because it's a very, very tiny, small white ball dahlia. Peaches and Cream, which is a peach color, obviously. Pin Hill Watermelon, which is one of the different varieties I'm growing this year. It's pink, creamed, and ruffly. It's a bit different from the others. Snow Ho Doris, which I actually ordered from the flower hat and they must have had a crop failure. I'm getting refunded on that one, so I won't be growing that one. But I did order it because it's a beautiful coral pink and I'll show a photo. And then Salmon Runner, which is a salmon and coral, which will probably be also one of my favorites along with Rock Run Ashley. So I'm gonna get these started. I have these spaced roughly eight inches apart. Um, I have seen a video online where you can space them this closely because some of them are single tubers. I'm going to try that spacing. And then next year, if I need to add another bed or move them elsewhere, I will do that. So this is mostly a big experiment this year and I hope it is successful. So stick around uh, and I'll show you how to plant these dahlias. So I've arranged these dahlias in order from like short, large, short again. So the largest ones are in the center. I've got this uh, cattle panel here that I will use to tie off the dahlias. The only thing I'm concerned about this area specifically is the wind comes this way towards our house. So I moved the cattle panel a little more to this side to provide some bracing for these dahlias. And I'm hoping it works well and we don't get any really high winds that will damage them. Uh, this is really the only area on my property that I would like to put this in this bed. So. I'm hopeful that it'll work out real well this year. So what you want to do is each dahlia has the tuber, which is this part right here, and then a neck and eyes around the neck. So what you want to do is you just want to plant this just below the sur surface of the soil and cover it up. Uh, the same thing happens with the clumps. Sometimes on these clumps you'll get what's called broken necks like this one. Uh, when they're shipped, those are no good. You can pull those off and just bury it the same way. So just bury all the tubers with the neck facing up, cover them slightly, and move on down to the next one. So stick around and watch me plant these. I forgot to mention I have one dahlia called Harvey, which is this one right here. I lost one of my dogs a couple months ago and my friend Jess bought me this dahlia that was named after him uh, and it's a beautiful maroon dahlia so it's going to live right here. I was going to plant it somewhere else in the garden bed uh, in the flower garden to stand out around a little memoriam stone that I have but I didn't want to risk that dahlia rotting with our clay soil so until I get this soil uh, elsewhere in the flower beds amended enough uh, I'm not going to risk putting more dahlias out there that are new or that I find kind of precious and want to keep. So down here on the end, if you watch my hydrangea pruning video, I found a hydrangea uh, that had rooted and a hydrangea stem, so I stuck it down here on the end. I will be removing that later in the season, but for now, I wanted it to grow on and get some roots on it. So I will move that after it grows up a little bit, but I didn't want to move it now because I was afraid that if I did, then it wouldn't survive and I would like to plant that up elsewhere since it was a surprise this spring. Dahlia tubers can be difficult to store. Um, in my zone, zone six, uh, they will not live over winter. So 
zone seven typically has a better chance of them surviving. I would be more happy if they were zone eight and then you could leave them in the ground. Zone six here, they just, they won't live. So I have to dig them up every year and store them. And storing can be difficult because on one hand, you don't want to rot your dahlias from too, too much humidity or moisture. And on the other hand, you don't want your dahlias to dry up because if they dry up too much, let me show you this tuber here from Eden Brothers. This is called desiccation. Uh, and it's basically the tuber shrinks up. You can see this one right here looks excellent. It still looks kind of like a potato, uh, but this one has shriveled up a little bit. Perfectly fine. It should grow fine. Dahlia tubers tend to do that. And then they will produce many more tubers this year and I'll have entire clumps that I could share with friends or spread out to other parts of the garden. This one is quite large. I'm not sure what variety it is. I put all the mixes on this side of the bed. Um, that way I know that this is all random kind of until I actually get a bloom. So I mentioned I filled up this bed with good potting soil and planters, planting soil. Go check out my video where I assembled this bed and filled it up if you would like. Um, I'm really excited about what it's going to bring to the garden this year. I've actually ordered another one from Vigo Garden and it's supposed to arrive in the next week or so that I'm going to put in the vegetable garden so I can plant some more greens because one thing I have an issue with is I fill my vegetable garden up with so many tomatoes and peppers that I don't have a lot of area for greens in the garden. So I'm going to use that primarily for greens. Now, one thing the instructions say is to not water these in until you see growth on them. Because some of these already have some sprouts and because currently this soil is very powdery uh, and it is very free draining based on what I filled it with, I'm going to go ahead and water these in to get them going along uh, since it's the middle of May. And I want to push these as much as possible so I can get some nice growth out of them and blooms earlier. Dahlias can take quite a long time to bloom. Depending on which variety you get, it can be August is really when they really take off. And that's it guys. Thanks for following along. I'm really excited to get these in the ground. Uh, follow my Instagram and I'll keep you updated, but I'm sure you will see lots of this bed uh, in garden tours this summer. I'm doing a garden tour tomorrow. I wanted to get some of this stuff, uh, early garden tours accomplished before I started that. And I hope you'll join and watch along. Like, subscribe, uh, and comment. If you have any questions about growing dahlias, I will try to answer them. I didn't have great success last year but I've learned a lot more since then. So gardening is a journey. You win some, you lose some, and I'm hoping this will be a big success. Take care guys, and remember, in a world full of hate, be a light.